Chelsea Football Club, the news at this club is never boring and Chelsea are always in the news and fans want to blow it up to make it into a bigger situation. Wesley Fofana, during the international break, did an interview on French TV and he basically shared his love for Marseille. However, in the same interview, he reiterated that he wants to stay and most probably retire at Chelsea. But yet, no, fans want to have a hysteria when I tell you what he said and the reaction is actually comical. People need to grow up and stop being childish. Then. Chelsea's dealings in the outgoings of transfer windows has hit a new low. And I'm gonna say a new low because this is a re reiterating theme. This is something that consistently happened. That Trofa Fana's deal broke down. Not only did we have a loan guaranteed for him to go out, there was an option that was never gonna get activated, but it was gonna set a precedent for the fee that we were meant to receive. The deal broke down, I'm gonna tell you why. It's actually potentially not Chelsea's fault, but we need to talk about why this is, keeps happening and why I'm getting annoyed now. And finally, Jurgensen is injured. Yes, he played for Denmark under 21 apparently and has had to come off. He is currently being assessed at Cobham and we will find out the longevity of his injury. But is this good news in the sense that Sanchez is the number one, so we're just gonna be without our backup? Or is this horrible news because we're gonna need Jurgen to go back into the game? There's a lot to talk about, but before we get started, I need you lot to do me a massive favor. Hit that like button because it's the easiest way to support the channel, to make the channel hit a thousand likes. That is the goal for this video. And subscribe if you're new. Like I always say, when you come into your house, what's the first thing you do? You go and wash your hands. You come to the Kafka's, you brought what do you do? You hit that like button. Let's get on with it. The international window is horrible for all football related fans and the clubs in general. Chelsea Football Club want to play games. They want to generate money. They want to put, make sure they fix the wrongs of the past and they want to climb up that table. The Chelsea players all want to play football and especially when they're not away on international duty, they got a lot of time. They train and they most probably have a lot of time to fill in. Well, Wesley Fofana, I don't know when he recorded this, but did an interview with a friend television company and within this interview Wesley Fofana said the following things and I want to get him on record and I want to explain to you guys what he said first and then we can go through it. He said I spoke with Marseille in the summer the sporting director reached out to me and I can't lie to you it was special it's Olympic Marseille. Then he said the current objective is to succeed at Chelsea he wants to be successful here and that's the main objective he went on to say, one day we will see. I don't know when that one day is. I could go there in a few years or I could retire at Chelsea. And what has happened? Well, since then, these quotes have come out because this interview is aired and Chelsea fans sell him. He is absolute embarrassment, spent two years injured and all of a sudden he's coming back now. He just wants to be negative. Dude, we need this out there. Sometimes learn to shut your mouth. That's what people were saying. And for me, it's hilarious because I can debunk every single one of those narratives. Number one, he is in his home country speaking in his native tongue in an interview where he's fully transparent. I love when players are fully transparent. However, he didn't say nothing disrespectful to Chelsea. He said, I was born in Marseille. It was the club I supported when I was a kid. I loved that club. So the idea of playing to them, so when I got the sporting director call to you, it is a dream come true. Guys, it is his dream to play for Marseille. He is French, he's not English. He didn't grow up in West London or South London or North London or East London and supported Chelsea his whole life. He didn't go to Stamford Bridge as a kid. Yes, there's photos of him as a kid in a Chelsea kit. And most probably he had an affinity to the club because it was a successful club. However, he's a Marseille fan. So the idea that he would consider ever playing for Marseille, it's crazy. Then he followed it up by saying, I want to be successful at Chelsea. I could even stay my entire career. This reiterates the point. He is basically speaking from his heart. He's speaking in his native tongue. He's comfortable. He's speaking about the emotion and passion he has for that club. Why is this a problem? I like hearing interviews like this. I, I would not believe him if he said, no, I only had a dream for Chelsea. Chelsea's the only club. Why would you only have a dream for Chelsea if you're a professional footballer that's not English and grew up in an area and supported the club because your mum, dad, granddad, nan, dog, cat all support the club. The only way that he could only support this club is he if he had a direct link as a kid to it. He didn't. He was a Marseille fan. So the fact that Marseille has to pull those strings to his heart, of course it matters. This isn't that deep. This is people trying to create controversy. 
Don't fall for it. Their negativity stinks. It is agenda driven. People don't like Fofana at the moment. I've noticed it and I don't understand why because the injuries weren't his fault. And if anything, the last two games in the Premier League, he has been absolutely outstanding. Yes, we can see the two goals against Wolves. Neither was his fault. Oh, uh, well, sorry, one was his fault. Other than that, he was okay. Then, the, f the game against Crystal Palace, he was bloody amazing. He was the one that gave commitment. He was the one that gave um, good carrying on the ball, good passing range. Him and Levi have been positives this year. Yet, people want to be negative. I don't like it at all. What I can be negative about is the way we handle our transfer dealings and the way we get players out. So, my argument here is, is this the end of the world? No. That trophy of Fana going, not going on loan is not the end of the world. We're not going to have a meltdown. We're not going to go crazy. But we can objectively like, have analysis on what we're seeing. We've seen multiple deals. Alex Matos, David Washington, that trophy of Fana. Deals get agreed. And then last minute, paperwork doesn't get filed on time. Uh, terms change. Um, the deal just breaks down because the alternative party wants to do this. Well, Fabrizio Romano has now come out and said there were late issues at the exchange of documentation. And this came from Nizir Cancela first, actually. He was spot on, so he deserves the praise. And one of the parties tried to change the terms last minute. I really hope it wasn't Chelsea. Because what I'm going to say is, we are causing so many problems for this player. It is actually criminal. This player joined Chelsea when he had an offer from Brighton. Mistake number one, should have went to Brighton, big man. Came to Chelsea, had 45 minutes, looked okay in that 45 minutes, got banished. Went on loan, went to Union Berlin, fell out when the manager came back, went to Burnley, had a very good performance at Burnley, four goals in 11 games, and now all of a sudden can't find the future club to play for. And now they're asking him to sit out till January unless we sort out a Turkish deal. This stinks. This for me is negligence. This for me is disgusting treatment of a player that's on our books. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. You are running a system where you buy and sell players at a vast volume, right? You need to have people that worry about the top earners as well as the earners at the bottom of the food chain. You need to worry about the people that are gonna be flipped for profit. You need to worry about the individuals that have careers that have been entrusted in your hands. You need to give him a proper loan. And if AEK, -A not AK, AEK, um, Athens changed the terms last minute, I'm going to ask you another question. Why did we leave it to such last minute? Why is this deal been dragged out? Why has that trophy of honor not left the club when we were in the US? Why did this deal come to this point? Because for me, Another thing that really irritates me is Enzo Maresca doesn't see him part of his plans. Why is Mark Gu part of the plans, but Datro Fofano is it? Datro is far more accomplished and far more ready to play. What, because Gu's got a couple of goals at Barcelona when he was 18. Fofano banged goals for fun in Norway. Then he went uh, on loan to Union Berlin, got Champions League experience, came back, got four goals in 11 games in the Premier League. I'm sorry. If we're looking at qualifications, that show is far ahead of him. Why is that show not being considered? Why is David Washington with the EPL2 team again and not being considered? I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense to me. It stinks of incompetence and amateurness. And you know what, me guys, I give Blue Co a lot of the benefit of doubt because I think they get a lot of unnecessary stick. But in this case, no, no benefit of doubt because your benefit of doubt went when the Hakim Ziyech deal broke down to PSG. Since then, I've seen this the same issue happen on three occasions. It stinks. I don't like it. No me gusta. No me. The final story coming out is that Philippe Jorgensen has suffered an injury at under 21 Denmark duty. This stinks, man. This is frustrating. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. He's being assessed. We don't know how serious it's going to be. He is the backup goalkeeper, so it's not like it's directly impacting the first team but then it does leave us in a little bit of a predicament now god forbid anything happens to Sanchez ben, Bentonelli's going in goal and that's when problems will start occurring because Bentonelli I don't remember the last time he played a professional game like is he even competent enough to play like so for us we need to pray something good happens with Sanchez but now that we're talking about this we need to assess the start to the season of Robert Sanchez and Philippe Jorgensen so for me Sanchez still edges the number one role because Enzo gave him it and I don't think Sanchez has been hopeless to the point that we need to say yeah take him out I think the Erling Haaland goal people said oh you know what it was a great finish kind of think it was a great finish make yourself bigger 
I think if you make yourself bigger there, Her Erling doesn't chip you, but it's Erling Haaland. He got absolutely packed by Mateo Kovacic. I think Sanchez should have saved that. Personally, you guys are gonna have a go at me. I think against Wolves, he had a very good performance. Sanchez was a very good goalkeeper. The Eze one, I don't think it was in the corners. I, if it's bottom corner, if it's top corner, I say, okay, cool. It was in the center, of the, like center height. You need to be shifting your feet quicker to go save that. That's my personal opinion. But all in all, his kicking's not been too horrible. He's been okay. Philippe Jorgensen, Philippe played really well in the first game against uh, Napkin FC. In the second game against Sevilla, he conceded a goal, but the goal that the second goal that he conceded, his foot got stuck in the turf. And it was due to the pitch why he got caught out. I was fuming, but then the more I saw it back, I saw the reason and it kind of made sense what happened. But all in all, I don't think he's done enough to get dropped yet, but we need to move on. So the reality is, this is the Kafka's view. Tomorrow there will be a match preview and I'm so happy to say that. And I've got a massive exam tomorrow morning at eight o'clock UK time. So can you lot in the comments below wish me luck because genuinely anyone that prays, anyone that says good luck, thank you and all the blessings to all of you. But I need to pass this exam. It is one step closer to me becoming a professional actuary. So it's just one of those things. This is a side hustle for me where I do this for fun. I do this because I love my community that I've built. I do this because it's something that I am passionate about and it's fun. This will never become a main job purely based on the fact that I don't want to ever hate doing this. I absolutely adore it. I look forward to my days to do this. So wish me luck. I've already the past 10 exams. I've got three left. I've got one, one tomorrow and one on the Wednesday and then one in April, hopefully, and then I'm done. So keep me in your prayers in the comments below. Let me know any good luck and anything that you disagree with today. Peace out. I'm out. Have a lovely day.